A startup hopes to double the useful life of a laptop with a modular architecture that allows customers to upgrade key components when they want. The founder is going to give us a look inside. It's all coming up on this episode of Text Changes. I'm Ross Rubin, Principal Analyst at Reticle Research, and welcome to Text Changes. Uh, my guest today is Nirav Patel. He is the CEO and founder of Framework, a startup that is looking to reinvent the laptop by allowing consumers to choose different components and upgrade them instead of having to throw out the whole device as it gets a bit older. Nirav, thank you so much for being my guest today. Thanks, Ross. It's great to chat with you. So uh, tell me, Nirav, tell me uh, what inspired you to start Framework? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, after a decade in consumer electronics at you know, Apple for a few years and then Oculus for the last seven years, I got to see basically the consumer electronics industry from end to end and just saw an enormous amount of waste and inefficiency. And it just felt like an industry that was kind of broken from end to end, you know, except for the big platform owners like the, you know, the Facebooks and Googles and Apples of the world. Uh, it's, it's a sort of like constant race to the bottom for companies that are in the space, just churning out new product for, you know, ultra low margins and trying to make it up in volume. And the result for consumers is that we've all got these products that are just not designed to last. They're effectively designed to work for some period of time and then wear out or break down or go out of date. And then, you know, you cycle back through and buy another one. And the process just repeats over and over again. Um, and of course, the end result of all of that is just electronic waste piling up everywhere. And so, you know, just like for years I've been thinking that it can't possibly be that an industry this important has to operate in such a broken model. There must be a better way. And so you came upon this uh, concept of uh, allowing uh, purchasers to uh, upgrade different components, to uh, offer different components, really going uh, far beyond the customized order process that we, we have today from uh, some of the, the leading vendors. Uh, could you tell me a bit about the first product that you're looking to bring to market and what some of the design goals were and what some of the module options are going to look like? Sure, definitely. So uh, I've actually got one here. This oh, is fantastic. Uh, pre-production. This is not uh, the final version, but it's effectively uh, complete and certainly complete enough to show off the features and functionality. Um, but you can see that, you know, sort of like the, the core part of the framework laptop is that from, you know, five feet away, it looks and feels and behaves like a normal notebook. And we sort of took that as like the core sort of table stakes of the product is that we want to have a thin, light, performant, 13 and a half inch notebook that within those constraints is as repairable and upgradable as cut and customizable as it, uh, as it can be. And the idea there was really that we don't want it to be this like challenging trade-off where you have this great long lasting product, but it looks, you know, crazy and bulky and there's stuff, you know, hanging off of it. <laughs> we wanted, you know, the, you know, the 99% of the time that you're using the product as a normal notebook to be that familiar, great experience. And then that 1% of the time where, you know, you need to replace your battery or add RAM or upgrade performance for that to be not just possible, but easy to do. Um, and so you can see some of the differentiated functionality we've built in is um, from a customization perspective, you can see that the ports, instead of being sort of locked into place as you typically find in a notebook and, you know, sort of defined by the notebook manufacturer, we've built our expansion card system where on both sides of the notebook, there are two expansion card bays and at order time, a consumer gets to choose exactly the ports that they want. Uh, and it seemed like, you know, a totally obvious thing to us that every person has a different set of needs when it comes to what devices they want to plug into their PC. And so, you know, why is it that we all have to have all these dongles and adapters? Why not just make the notebook flexible to accommodate what people actually want? Uh, and so we've built in the system and we've got, you know, USB-A, USB-C, DisplayPort, HDMI, uh, micro SD, we have high speed expansion, uh, storage expansion, and we're just going to continue to add new cards and also open up the ecosystem to bring in third parties to make their own cards. It's funny, as you talk about some of these options, uh, it reminds me of some of the days of the PCM CIA or, or PC card right, slot. Yeah. And there were 
so many options uh, for adding capabilities to PCs. That's where we saw some of the first Wi-Fi cards and there were uh, Ethernet, there was storage, uh, there, were, there were all of these, uh, these options. And we gave away a little bit of that, I think, when uh, that, uh, that slot uh, disappeared. So uh, any, any thoughts on the kind of uh, third-party modules that you're expecting to see come to the platform? Yeah, we've gotten, uh, you know, since announcing the product publicly last week, we've got a ton of inbound interest from folks with, uh, you know, their own applications. And, you know, the nice thing about this is that developing a card is relatively straightforward for, you know, a company making consumer electronics products or even a, a hobbyist individual to be able to do. And so, you know, we, we want to see cards where someone has like some specific need builds, you know, a hundred of something and finds the hundred people out there in the world who get super excited about that and want to have that built into their laptop. Um, and so we really expect to see like a pretty massive proliferation of not just, you know, these really high running cards, like, a, you know, like a video output, like an HDMI, um, but also really niche things like microcontrollers or data acquisition cards or, you know, high end audio outputs that really uh, enable things that just haven't been available inside of uh, a notebook. Um, we're actually offering this not just as a pre-built system, which, you know, you unbox and hit the power button and you boot up and you get your, your PC like you would any other one, um, but also as a kit of modules that you can customize to a deeper level and then actually assemble yourself and load whatever OS you'd like onto it, just like you would a desktop. You, you mentioned the DIY option. Of course, it's still possible today uh, to go out and you know, build your own PC and, and pick your own video card and processor and case and, and all that. But uh, it, it can be a bit daunting for people who aren't comfortable getting inside of a box and hooking up all of these wires. So it's cool to see that the framework computer can rekindle some of that excitement, even though, as you say, to reach a, a broader audience, it's really going to have to support a lot of these more mainstream uh, options as well. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we've designed this thing to really be as easy as possible to service. And so I can shut this down and actually open it up and show you some of the insides. Um, but, you know, there's just exposed fasteners on the bottom. We ship with a screwdriver in box that does, you know, everything that you need to be able to replace in the, in the product with a single tool. Um, and then it, uh, it's a rather simple uh, effort of, you know, popping open the cover. Uh, and getting inside and, you know, keyboard replacement, super easy. We're offering a range of languages. And then as you get inside, actually every module in this thing is clearly labeled with what it is and a QR code that takes you into the repair guide for it, as well as a place you can order a replacement part or an upgrade part. So, you know, battery, RAM, storage, even the entire main board can be taken out and replaced. Um, and we've got, you know, simple, easy to follow guides for all of these. And that's fantastic. So it's, it's almost kind of an educational tool as well for yeah, in some ways. people to learn more about uh, what's going on in, inside their, their laptop. Uh, clearly, sustainability is one of the goals of, of the product. Have you, do, do you have any estimates or uh, say if, if framework is able to affect this kind of change in the marketplace, what the impact might be in terms of eliminating or reducing waste in the PC, biz PC laptop business? Yeah, definitely. So in general, our goal is to enable people to use the product for as twice, twice as long as they would normally use uh, a notebook. Um, and, and actually a key part of that is that we want those to be happy years. You know, when someone buys a notebook, they might get like a couple of happy years where, you know, the battery life's great and their, you know, key, keyboard's working perfectly and all the ports function and, you know, there's no dents in the thing. And then, you know, after that, <laughs> you, your battery's wearing out, you maybe you've got like, you know, your W key is kind of wonky and you're, you know, you've got a crack on the screen or something like that. Uh, and you, you know, you suffer through it for a while. Um, but with the framework laptop, we really want people to have happy, productive years with the product. And if they you know, need a new battery or they need more storage space or they want more performance, that they're able to just get the piece of the product that lets them get back to that good working state and keep going. Um, and so like that alone, that extension of the longevity um, you know, is a substantial reduction in the environmental impact just by needing to create less new full systems. When you showed off the product, uh, one of the things that struck me is 
it's going to be tough to compete with, you know, say the absolute thinnest notebooks on, on the market, uh, given what you're trying to achieve in terms of the modularity. But what it reminded me of in terms of the sort of form factor is a lot of these high performance laptops that we've seen. You mentioned the 11th gen uh, Intel core architecture that can offer pretty impressive gaming capabilities in a laptop that has about that level of thickness. So it seems that you're probably shooting more for that customer who wants a, a higher end uh, potential experience than perhaps the ultimate in ultra mobility, at least out of the gate? Um, yeah, I mean, this, I guess the results sort of speak for themselves in that we're at 15.85 uh, millimeters thick, which is, mm. um, you know, you can, I guess, stack it up against the <laughs> the, uh, the competitors in the space and see how, how it stacks up. But basically, we, we really actually did set this target from the beginning of, mm. we want this thing to be an easy choice. We don't want it to be, I want upgradability or repairability and I have to pay for it in thickness. So we set a thickness target from day one of, of designing the machine and we were able to land it. Um, and we believe that really does uh, result in the framework laptop stacking up really well against the other popular, um, you know, basically Tiger-like notebooks that are out there in the market. Have you given any thought to sort of where the starting price might be or where you expect the range uh, of opening prices to be? Yeah, th this is another one where we really look at what's out there in the market. And we know that the notebook space is just an incredibly competitive category to be in. And we don't want it to be a difficult choice. We don't want consumers to have to pay for longevity. And so that's not something we're going to ask consumers to do. Um, and so we'll be announcing pricing before we open up pre-orders. But in general, we will be benchmarking against the popular notebooks that are using the same processors. And we want it to be, again, like a very easy comparison for a consumer to you know, put these different models side by side and see performance, thickness, weight, price are all comparable, but the framework laptop enables longevity and repairability and customization that you just can't get from the other options. As we discussed, PCs have a, a long history of uh, being able to be upgraded and in some ways you're kind of bringing back a, a lot of the original spirit that uh, that we saw in the early days of, of PCs. Uh, but most of the focus on creating some kind of modular architecture over the past few years has been in the smartphone space. Uh, Motorola, of course, with the Z series and they definitely gave it a, a good run, uh, certainly tried to support it with, with a lot of modules. Uh, but unfortunately, it was, you know, very difficult for them to compete. And also, certainly, they didn't have the degree of modularity that, that you do in terms of being able to pick the, the processor. And, you know, they did, they did have some add-on battery packs and, and things like that. So having looked at some of those experiments, uh, do you have any takeaways? Do you think there's any relevance, any lessons learned? Yeah, definitely. I think lesson one is don't do a smartphone as your <laughs> as your entry point into into making longer lasting. And, and why products. is that? Why is that? It, it's it's just such a brutal category. You know, even companies like Google, with, you know, who own the operating system, putting billions of dollars a year, are like barely making a dent in the market with their Pixel phones. Um, and you know, to go in there as a startup, you know, I, I think you know, we see companies like Fairphone doing that and. And you know, we love that company. I think what they're doing is incredible, but that is just a very, very hard category to compete in. Whereas we look at notebooks and we see a ton of existing modularity on the desktop side of the space and sort of a ready-made audience of people there who love the idea that their PCs are modular and that they can be upgraded and customized. And these are the same consumers who, you know, needing PCs also buy and use notebooks, but just don't have the same options available on the notebook side. Uh, and so we saw that as this, you know, really interesting opportunity for us to be able to go out there and have a category where a lot of modularity exists or, you know, a set of technologies where a lot of modularity exists and an audience that's receptive to that and to be able to basically tie those things together with a great high performance, great looking uh, notebook that, that fulfills the mission. I'm wondering if there might be some other benefits that come from this uh, approach having easy access, relatively easy access to the components, thinking there might, for example, be security advantages or some flexibility if I want to have custom environments for a work PC or, or a home PC. Uh, do you see that 
being a motivator or a, a message that you're going to put out into the marketplace? Yeah, there's definitely some interesting stuff we can do there. Um, let's see, yeah, I've got one of the expansion cards here actually, which is our storage expansion card, which is literally a, a high speed, effectively SSD as a, an expansion card. This is a 256, we also have a one terabyte, but we've designed this thing to be bootable. And so you can actually load different operating system installs onto an expansion card and you know pop it in when you wanna get into, you know, let's say your security or privacy focused OS and then take it out and drop back into, you know, maybe, you know, your gaming focused Windows install. To what degree do you think the design of the laptop will resonate with consumers when they're making the purchase in terms of now I have a whole bunch of options that I might not have had with a traditional notebook design versus people thinking ahead and saying, okay, I'm going to be able to get to the goal you mention twice the lifetime out of this than I would from uh, from another laptop? I think it is ultimately a combination. I think, you know, sort of the delayed gratification of longevity is not necessarily a thing that people are thinking about when they buy a product. Although, you know, we hope that people, we hope that people do. Um, but, you know, that ability to customize right from day one, we think sort of immediately lands the concept that this is different. This is open for you to be able to do what you want with in ways that other products aren't, um, and that we're just going to continue to extend that with the availability of repair parts and upgrade parts to get that longevity to you. Um, and kind of going back to the expansion cards and the modules, this is going to continue to become a richer and more interesting ecosystem the more we grow it. You know, the more users we add into the install base, the more uh, third party uh, companies and makers who can come in as expansion card makers or other module makers the more interesting this ecosystem gets. And so we, we do see that over time, um, that richness of customization and modularity is just gonna continue to get more and more interesting. A new chapter for laptops, one that borrows a little bit from, from their past, but which has some exciting new applications. Nero, I wanna thank you so much for being my guest today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ross. It was great chatting with you. And thanks everyone for joining us today. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at Ross Rubin. My company's website is reticleresearch.com. And please join Sean Dubravac and I as we analyze the week's biggest tech stories on the Tech Expansive podcast. I'm Ross Rubin, and this has been Tech Changes. Music